welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. Uh, we are once again in Illinois, just riding around the local forest preserves around Chicagoland and where we live. And uh, today we're going to talk about going into Guatemala and seeing. I mean, for me, I think this is my favorite of the Mayan ruins. I think I said this is my favorite of the Mayan ruins, every ruin that we went to. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is totally my favorite. This one's so cool. But this one might this have taken very the cake because it was, you know, it's Tikal, you know. Tikal. Tikal is, it's famous for being the capital of the Mayan Empire. Now, if you look at the map of Guatemala, you'll see that there's this kind of square top to it, and that area is called the Peten, and it's a very undeveloped, jungly area. In fact, it has the largest stretches of jungle in Central America. So when it comes to the wild and the wilderness and all the crazy things that go along with that, this is the place to be in Central America. Yeah, I mean, once we, we entered with Phil and Sepna into Guatemala and that border was kind of a, not awesome, but we, we got <laughs> to the first town. and I wanted to camp at Tikal. Yes. Uh, Phil and Sepna don't, don't camp, and so we s split ways. But, but they were going to meet us at the ruins. Yeah, they were definitely going to go to Tikal. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to Tikal, Marissa was just talking about this very sparsely populated area of Guatemala, mm. and the only way to get to Tikal, which is like the only thing on the map, is this little squiggly line that cuts all the way north. And I mean, you're just in jungle, and that yes. road was was so very, very, very cool. And this is the weird thing. Well, yes, the road is so cool, especially because it's twisty, it's narrow, and it has all of these wild animal signs. Yeah, we're like in the States, like they've just like yield to traffic and like train tracks. And I mean, this one had like jaguars like and eaters. snakes. And yeah, it's like, oh, wow. And there's these little sky bridges too for the animals to like the monkeys oh, yeah. to crawl across, you know. So cool. 
It is definitely a wilderness area, but this is what I always think about is if this is the capital of the Mayan Empire, or it was, how is it now just this dense, dense jungle? Long ago, it must have been very populated and there were little towns and also well developed. I mean, the Mayans were good at agriculture. They had corn, they grew a lot of it. And so they must have cleared a lot of this jungle long ago, but at the same time, they were living very harmoniously with nature. And so I think they incorporated all of those jungle elements into their lives, especially the animals. You see the faces of the animals in their carvings, in their uh, theological structure, their gods. Um, so important animals would be like the monkeys and the birds and the jaguars, snakes. So yeah, twisting down these little, you know, strips of asphalt through the, the, the dense jungle, seeing these signs go by, my, my eyes are you know, plastered on the road because it's not just a straight line, but I'm, I'm looking for the Jaguar. Where's the Jaguar? You know, where's... <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. So it was real fun. And then you, before you get to like anywhere close to Tikal is like where you pay your entrance fee. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we were excited because we were staying overnight, which either you don't do because it's, it's really expensive. Uh, a lot of the tour buses will, will bus you in. Um, and there are a couple of hotels on site, but those it, are really expensive. Yeah, it's not expensive to camp. And the camping though is, <laughs> but who flies on, a, who, who camps at Tikal? No one right. like flies into Guatemala and then <laughs> goes to Tikal with their, with their tent and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're either very rich or very poor when you're staying overnight <laughs> at Tikal. And uh, it was just this huge soccer field, yeah. you know, with these little huts that went kind of around the perimeter and there was a, a nice garden gardener guy that yeah. lived in a little shack that was cool. And literally it's a soccer field. That's where all I mean, they the were workers soccer. Yeah, they play soccer there. <laughs> That's like their you know, I mean they're the, their pastime. A whole bunch of people work there to help maintain and all that. Yes. So they were all eating. They have, they have like little shops and stuff for the regular tourists to 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 go by. Mm -hmm. And it's just fun when you're when you're there for hours upon hours, like a day, you know, a whole afternoon in the same spot because we weren't going in until the next morning. And uh, yeah, it was just... You got to be a part of the local community of the people who take care of Tika. <laughs> and what's really cool is you have to realize that a lot of these people are Mayan yeah. ancestors. Like they are, well I guess their ancestors were the Mayans, but they're considered to be Mayan people. They can speak Mayan, they can speak Spanish, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they are the people of that area. Yeah. It's so cool. And there was a hotel across the street, like the Jaguar Hotel or something, that I thought I'd be able to steal Wi-Fi from, mm. but the Wi-Fi wasn't very good. But, you know, so we just, <laughs> we set up our, our tent in our little, you know, shack under yeah it has a little palapa so a little roof it was, was nice, really and, nice and breezy you know so this open field it was good because yeah. air flow could get in uh so we weren't just sweltering all the time because that would have been absolutely mm -hmm. awful but, but there's two really cool things besides all of that with staying and camping there overnight and the first was the fireflies. Oh, totally. Both unexpected to me. You know, I mean, you don't read about <laughs> it in the, like the pamphlets. But that night, we kind of, we got, the mosquitoes are still a thing. So they that was are awful. Bad. <laughs> and so we crawled into our tents fairly early at dusk. Um, mm. And then we're, we're sitting there, we're, we're reading up on the, the, to call maps and stuff online or in their pamphlets. And then it just starts this little, Tinkerbell show the outside. Light show. So the whole cool. soccer field. I mean, it's lit up. 100 yards Stars. by 20 yards. And it's just twinkling, glittering, all of them dancing. Absolutely Amazing. magical. Of course, we can't capture it on footage. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Well, I'm not good enough to do that, but. Um, it's just so magical in that moment. Very, very, very cool and unexpected. It's those unexpected things that just always get me. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went to bed 
very happy. Yeah, we're like, this is great. To call is happening better. the next day. There's, you know, there's fireflies <laughs> protecting us. Yeah. And then we hear these creepy, insane, in the middle of the night, woken up by like these snorting demons. beasts of demons. Yes. And so scary the noises loud reverberating throughout the forest and it seemed to like I've watched the movie Congo too many times it's a bad movie from like the I 90s I don't know that movie <laughs> it's silverback apes attacking humans oh. but that's that's what's going on in my head in the middle of my head <laughs> Like, you can hear them surrounding us. Like, they were over there, yeah. and now they're over here, and then they made a call, and then you hear these good group too, like, oh, the no tears are over this way, you know, and then they surrounded us. Yeah, they get closer and closer. And we, uh, a tree branch right behind our tent goes, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is, this is it. This is the final Practically stand. Practically peeing in our pants. <laughs> Insane. Absolutely crazy. But, uh. They're howler monkeys. Yeah. So actually, they're pretty harmless. Um, they Well, they stay in the trees. They don't go attacking people. No. And it's just their calls are so menacing. Their territorial calls. They're not mating calls because no, they would their species would die. But their <laughs> territorial, like, don't mess with me. This is my my piece of, of land was just... Yeah. I don't know if we can find a, a, a sound bite or something. I can't impersonate it. It was just... Now we have uh, a small clip Yes. from the next day when yeah. we were in Tikal. We came across these creatures again. You don't even know where they are. It's just, it sounds like surround sound. Like there's speakers all around you and you can't find the source. No. Um, and it's so deep, but you know they're in the trees somewhere and they can see you. They know where you are. You just don't know where they are. And they're very large monkeys. They're, um, I, I don't know if they're apes or they have a tail or not, but they're large and black and furry, very fuzzy, very, um, very sweet looking. And I mean, they're hard to, you know, to physically see because they're really yeah. active at night. They're active during the day as well, but they don't, they're not like as interactive as some of the, the white faced, whatever they were called. The cappuccino. Yeah, monkeys. I was going to say cappuccino. But and no. then, <laughs> well, it's similar. Yeah. And then um, the spider monkeys. Yeah, those are, those so are the little. Cool. Yeah. If you go to Tikal, even if you don't hear the howler monkeys or camp there overnight, you're probably going to see spider monkeys. Yeah, for sure. Because those guys, I mean, you just got to keep your eyes focused on the trees above you and listen for branches breaking or uh, the sound of branches and you will see these spider monkeys swinging from branch to branch like it's a jungle gym. I mean, they are gymnasts. They use their tails like arms, so basically they have like five arms. Yeah. <laughs> They're was, really cool. But it was a pretty creepy night of sleep. We did yeah. finally get back to sleep after, you know, the terror went away. Yeah. Um, I was really excited for the next day. We they, they sell early, early admission tickets, so yes. you can see like the sunrise over the main temple. We didn't wake up for that. We no. do kind of like to sleep in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But we woke up and we were some of like the first 50 people yes. in, if, if even that. Because the tour bus, the, the main gate. They're coming from the town of Flores mostly. I mean, there is that little hotel within Tikal. Yeah. Um, and there might be another, but most tourists who go to Tikal are staying in hotels in the main town of the Peten called Flores, which is on this beautiful lake, Petenitsa. And uh, it's a really nice area, but yeah. and they that, have to take a bus to get to Tikal in the morning. Yeah, and that road that we took in with all the cool little mm. animal signs, I mean, 
it was two hours to the next place where we could have even gotten food. I, I was glad we had enough yeah. snacks and food to last us because it was either that or you go to the expensive hotel and, mm -hmm. and pay too much. And Phil and Sapno were also coming from uh, Flores. Mm -hmm. So it does take a while to get to Tikal from there. And so since we had camped right there at the gates of the park, we were able to yeah. get right in and And it's explore. one of those toll booth gates. I mean, you show your ticket, you know, and they, they, yep. they let you in and... <laughs> Uh, you know, we were roaming around, and it's a huge, huge site. And so there's massive. There's five or six or seven main attractions, if you will, mm -hmm. with just scattered with main attraction minus point five or whatever. I, it's yes, just, temples and buildings. It, it's I don't want to say Disneyland in that there were lots of people and um, you know lots of lines. What I say by Disneyland is like, I mean, you could just keep going and going and yeah. going and you'll see, oh, there's this whole new area that they built over here and then yeah. this new area over here. And you have your main paths that take, you know, like wheelchair accessible and stuff like that. And then there's all these paths that cut through the forest that are just dirt with, you know, yeah. it's just a natural, well, it's a, a strip of cut down land. I can't use words. <laughs> They're forest paths is what a simple like a person trail? would call them. A trail! That's the word. She, that's why I bring her with me. Oh. That's so cool. But so, you know, you can cut it through, through these backwoods that connect yeah. some of these dots as well. And we just went from one to the other we were kind of saving some of the big ones up for the grand finale and we wanted to wait for Phil and Stefna who weren't going to be there until like noon. Mm. But when we first got there and we went to the main s square, yeah. nobody there. Nobody. And that's where the two, two towers, if you will, just kind of stare at each other. It's kind of like the plaza where you have, yeah, these two opposing temples that look at each other. And uh, they're just so iconic and beautiful. They're so steep. When you think of a pyramid, you think of either like Egypt, and this seems very kind of geometrical, like oh, a triangle. Um, but these temples, they were just they huge. shoot up yeah. like a skyscraper. Yeah. Uh, very tower-like, and you used to beautiful. be able to climb up them. And mm. this is where I kind of like it when you know people say, "Hey, we want your money, and we want you to go see your stuff," but or our stuff, but. It like it started into a road and they're like okay no one can climb anymore yeah. and I'm very appreciative of that in on two ways because they'll be around for a lot longer but secondly you can take a picture of it without a, a bunch of ants on a log you know so <laughs> in bright colored shirts and, bright, and, shorts yeah. and cameras so yeah. <laughs> it's it's really really nice to, mm. to to take in to absorb and of course there's all these little other side segments that yeah you can go uh, it's I mean it's an entire city yeah so you have to think of how many people were living in this city and they have the nobility quarters they have the royal quarters they have the peasants people, yeah the peasant area they have the market area they, they have the have, necropolis yes they have burial grounds um, and religious centers they have all sorts of things going yeah. on in this city uh, there are temples you can climb yes and many 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 Yes, and these are really cool because all of these things have been unexcavated from the jungle. So they were, I mean, basically un under the earth. They were under trees, they were under foliage, and they had to be carefully dug up. But usually they'll leave one side still yeah. with all the trees and foliage on it. And that side, they'll allow you to climb up sometimes. And they'll build stairs in, into mm -hmm. it, you know. Which is still a little scary. Sometimes they'll have like a hand rope to guide you because no. uh, it is very steep it is coming very up steep. those. But then you can get a view. I think Temple Four. Uh, they they have these very not so basic awesome names. names. Very, yeah, Temple very, One, yeah. Two, Three. <laughs> you know, I mean, I could come up with. Yeah. <laughs> at least Temple Sun and the Moon. I mean, that's everywhere else. Temple of the just, Jaguar, yeah. something yeah, cool. Something but romantic. No, Temple Four <laughs> um, has a very iconic view. By that time, we'd met up with Phil and Sepna. Yeah, if they. Well, it was cool because I mean, we we knew we were gonna meet up with Phil and Sepna, and so 
We did, and we had a little picnic powwow, and we're taking pictures. And then we were coming down a set of stairs, and we saw Robert Death. <gasps> the, yeah. the, the German hitchhiker that we had first met in... Yeah, if you'd been following along on our book, well, this is Tim's book, that he wrote about this whole journey, um, we met Robert Death, and we call him Robert Death for a reason. We met him in Death Valley. <laughs> yeah, in Death Valley in the United States. And then he was there in Guatemala in Tikal. And this is one of the coolest experiences. It was fantastic. It was like we, uh, I never knew what our speed was, but now I know it's one German hitchhiker. <laughs> That's our speed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's no kilometers per hour. Sometimes you kilometers. go faster than us. <laughs> yes. But it was just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it was a reunion of of of. I couldn't have picked a better setting. And I, I didn't know that he was even his, in the area. With his dreads. Oh yeah, he's got these huge, long, snake-like. Very dreads. recognizable. And then the front of his head is shaved. Yes. He's a very uniquely looking fellow. But. Uh, <laughs> Always good to run into him. So we had a little picnic yeah. with him. We introduced Robert Death to Phil and Sepna, and you know, we, we planned on- Merging of worlds. It merging. doesn't get better than that. <laughs> yeah, and that's what the, like, some of the coolest parts were. Like, Phil is French who lived in Canada. Uh, Sepna is Fijian living in Canada. And also of Indian heritage. Indian I mean, heritage. It was like the whole world is And just Robert is together. German, and then- And here we are in Guatemala. And it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was just so cool. And yeah. so we, we planned to meet up with Robert later because he, he had, was on his way out and we were just meeting up with Phil and Sepna. But then we did go to Temple 4. Yes. And that's where you can see the like Star Wars yeah. tattooing. I forget what planet okay, they were. Okay, no, it's supposed to be Yaren 4. Yaren 4. I'm a little bit of a Star Wars nerd. Um, <laughs> but this was in A New Hope. So what is that? The first Star Wars movie that came out. So that'd be episode four. Um, so, I mean, ages ago, you know, this is so iconic. This view of what we consider to be this really awesome other planet. And here it is in Guatemala, in Tikal. Yeah. That exact same view that they used in the movie. And we got a perfect view of the equivalent it. Equivalent view. Good weather. Yeah. Wonderful. Not too hot and sunny, but you get that kind of like cloudy, mystical feel to it. There's a bunch of uh, Star Wars nerds there that, you yeah. know, it's been too long for me to have seen those movies and I can't, you know, I've seen Star Wars once, uh, you know, but, <laughs> uh, like, that's where the Millennium Falcon flew off into uh, the distance yeah. between Temple X and Y. Yeah. But, uh, without anything doing with Star Wars, it was just an absolute amazing view that... For sure. It was, you know, very, very special. But I think that does, it's perfect that it was in Star Wars because when you go there you do feel like this is another world this is galaxies far far away yes. long long ago yes. all wrapped up into the same thing like is it is it superpower technology and aliens or is it just ancient ancient uh, technology that's well, like uh, historic you know it's like I don't know, like Ewoks, right? Ewoks built it, and they didn't build it in there. But like, it's like I would, you, I would believe you if you're like, no, Ewoks are real. Let me show you where they they live. And I'd be like, oh, Ewoks are totally real. This is crazy. I totally didn't think Ewoks were real, but I, I could I see it all. Yes. So it was very. But let's give credit where it's due. The they were Mayans not Ewoks. They were Mayans. These incredible structures. And our minds were blown away. It was already what we could see and yes. I mean there's just so much that you physically can't see I think we might be in trouble oh uh oh oh dear she might be telling us to I just don't want to get a ticket nothing says don't hi, hi. let me turn this off <laughs> <laughs>